Hello friends, Pastor Emmanuel Ogbeche here of Diplomats Assembly. I want to welcome you to another beautiful opportunity we have to experience victory. Victory experience. We're going to begin the service this evening with a word of prayer. I want to ask you to lift up your voice wherever you are and let's just go into God's presence and receive the manifestation of the Spirit into our lives in the service today. Holy Spirit, we just want to welcome you to this victory experience. We thank you for what you have in stock for us. We bless your holy name. We invite you to manifest yourself to every life. We ask in the name of Jesus that the manifestations of the Spirit will be given to every man to profit with her. We thank you, O God, for the spirit of revelation and all you have in stock for us this evening. We welcome you to this beautiful service. We say be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone said aloud, Amen. Welcome. Welcome to Victory Experience. I want to encourage you to reach out to your friends and loved ones and, and tell them we're live. They can join us all throughout, you know, the internet, you know, using all the different available platforms on Facebook, on YouTube, on DRM Live. It promises to be an amazing experience of victory this evening. The Bible tells us that the victory that overcomes the world is our faith. And this is the reason why we are pumping out God's word to build faith into your spirit, because the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So when you when we hear God's word, we are able to tap into the faith that is necessary for victory. The scripture also tells us that the just shall live by his faith. And we have been sharing on the spirit of prosperity. We've been using the book of Daniel and analyzing and exploring the amazing revelations of God's purpose and God's plan for our lives as documented in that scripture. We started off by looking at how Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and a couple of Jews were carried to the land of Babylon. And the Bible says they are being carried into the land of Babylon, even though physically physically looked like a challenge. We have said that it was actually divine repositioning. God was repositioning them in a place where they could well influence and they could well, you know, exert, you know, the dominion that they were born to exert in their days. And Today, the tragedy that came upon the Jews in those days by which they came into Babylon is a type and shadow of the different conflicts and difficulties that believers have to go through today. The entire globe came under the influence of the coronavirus this year, and we do know that Satan is behind it. But every time when the devil takes a step, God is always many steps ahead of the devil. And we are unpacking the purpose of God, the plan of God, you know, at this time. Time. And I want you to fasten your seatbelt as we take the message further, you know, today. You know, the Bible tells us that Daniel... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were selected from among the crowd. They were chosen supernaturally by the Spirit of God. They enjoyed divine favor. And in our last service, we talked a lot about divine favor. And I want you to know that divine favor is still at work. It is the heritage of the righteous. The Bible says in Psalm 5 verse 12, it says, The Lord will bless the righteous with favor. He will surround us like a shield. And you need to stand fast, you know, for divine favor in these times that we live in. It is one of the secrets, you know, to excelling and prospering in these times that we have found ourselves in. Hallelujah. Daniel did not only enjoy divine favor. The Bible says he was a man of praise. And we talked about the fact that one of the reasons why they were chosen, him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the land of Babylon to stand before the kings of Babylon was because they belong to the tribe of Judah. And if you are a born again child of God, if you have made Jesus a Lord of your life, I want you to know that you belong to the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is a tribe of men who know how to praise the Lord. They praise the Lord at all times. They praise the Lord at all seasons. They praise the Lord in all circumstances. They praise the Lord. Come rain, come shine. They are countenances are not changed by their circumstances. They understand that praise is a weapon of war. And I want you to know that God wants us to continuously use that praise, use that 
praise principle for victory in every area of our lives. The Bible says, by Jesus, therefore, let us offer unto God the sacrifices of praise. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were selected in the land of Babylon to stand before the kings of Babylon because they were men born from the tribe of Judah. And I'm saying that praise will bring you into a realm of supernatural distinction. Praise, learning to praise God at all times will separate you into a different class. It will bring you into a place of favor even before people in position of power, people in position of influence, and you will find yourself ascending to your place of destiny. The coming of the children of Israel into the land of Babylon was not an accidental occurrence. There was a purpose behind it. God had a plan. God had a purpose. And there had to be an unpacking of the purpose. And this evening, I want to speak to you about critical huddles that you must cross in order for you to be able to unpack and unleash the fullness of God's purpose for your life. It was one thing for Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to have come into the land of Babylon. It was another thing for them really to begin to reign and to rise to the very top in the midst of Babylon. In chapter 1, we noticed that when they were selected, you know, and they came, you know, to stand before King Nebuchadnezzar, they were selected on the grounds of Greece. They were selected on the grounds of divine favor. They were selected because they had the spirit of God at work in them. God supernaturally gave them access because of his grace. In chapter 2, they had to begin to cross the necessary hurdles, the examinations, the different tests that must come before the different promotion that, you know, they were destined, you know, to enjoy. You know the story. In chapter 2 of the book of Daniel, the Bible tells us that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. In that dream, he saw, you know, a head of gold and uh, a, a chest of silver and abdomen of brass, you know, ties of, of made of, uh, of iron, I mean, of, 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 of iron and legs made of iron and, and uh, feet made of a mixture of iron and clay. You know the story. The Bible tells us when he dreamt the dream, Nebuchadnezzar forgot the dream, you know. And when he woke up from the dream, the scripture tells us that Nebuchadnezzar passed a law and said all the Magicians should be brought before him, and they had a task. Their job was to reveal the dream, and by revealing the dream, you know, they will be promoted. If they don't reveal the dream, they will be killed. And the Bible says the commandment of Nebuchadnezzar was very, very, you know, intense, and none of the magicians could tell the dream. And 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 at this time, the information came to Daniel because he was one of the scientists in the land of Babylon at that time, and he was chosen as a wise man to stand before the king. And he he and his two, three friends, the Bible tells us, were also supposed to be among those that were killed. So they came into their first mountainous obstacle in the book of Daniel chapter number two. And I'm saying by the Spirit of God that in order for them to rise to the top in the place where God had ordained for them to reign, crossing that mountain, over, oh, you know, overcoming that challenge was going to be a, a prerequisite. You know, physically speaking, it looked like, you know, a situation that was literally going to challenge their life, challenge their faith. It was like a trouble design, designed to destroy them. But it was not supposed to be, that's, that was not the plan of God, you know, at the end of the day. You know, rather, we notice what Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. The Bible says when the king's commandment came that they should kill all the wise men and all those who were the scientists of the land who could not reveal the dream. The Bible says Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went into prayer. Hallelujah. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, that in order for you to enjoy the fullness of the operation of the spirit of prosperity. You must know how to respond to troubles when troubles come knocking on your door. There are times in your pathway to your destiny where different kinds of troubles will come knocking at your door, different kinds of challenges, challenges you never anticipated. You have already seen God at work. God has already brought you to stand before the king Nebuchadnezzar in the land of Babylon. The anointing of the spirit is already has already made a way for you. Somehow you've been selected, but now trouble shows up. Nebuchadnezzar passes a decree and says, 
all the wise men must be killed. All the wise men must, you know, be destroyed, except they are able to, to show him his dream and interpret the dream. And the Bible tells us that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went to prayer with Daniel. They went to seek the face of the Lord, and they began to pray. And I want to say to you by the Spirit of God that when you are faced with a mountain, it is not an indication that you have come to the end of the road, but it is an opportunity for you to deploy the power of prayer. Whoa, hallelujah. The scripture tells us that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. It doesn't matter how life threatening the obstacle may be that you may be facing right now. If you can get on your knees and pray, if you can get on your knees and fasting and prayer and call upon the Lord, God will come through for you. God will show you a vision. God will reveal to you, you know, an answer in the circumstance. Glory, 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 glory be to God. The Bible tells us that what was supposed to be an obstacle that was life-threatening turned out to become an opportunity for promotion. And I want to say to you, every trouble you're faced with right now, every challenge or difficulty, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your job, whether it's in your health, it's not designed to hinder you, but it's an opportunity for you to rise higher, glory, for you to rise to the top, for you to excel, for you to be promoted in the midst of the, you know, the place where you find yourself in. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went to prayer, and the Bible says they gave themselves to fellowship and prayer, and they began to call upon the name of the Lord. And the scripture tells us that God revealed to Daniel the, the, the vision. You know the story. Daniel saw the vision in the night, and the Bible tells us he went into Nebuchadnezzar, and he said to Nebuchadnezzar, you know the God of heaven is able to interpret to you your dreams. Tell you your dreams, and interpret your dreams. I'm going to just read the end of that story and I'm going to just highlight here the fact that problems of any kind designed, you know, to come your way are not designed to stop you. They are designed to distinguish you. Hallelujah. If you know how to respond rightly, I want to say to you that every problem you're faced with is designed to distinguish you. Every challenge you're faced with is an opportunity for God to show his power. And I want you not to be faint-hearted or to be discouraged because you know, only those who know their God will be strong and be able to do exploits in the time of need. Glory be to God. Let's read that scripture. Daniel chapter number two. Daniel chapter number two. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Daniel, you know, the Bible says, you know, Daniel goes into God and prays. And after he and his friends had finished praying, God revealed a dream to Daniel and he came and showed the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. And the Bible says, are you out there? In verse number 46, then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face. Daniel 2, 46. The king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods. <laughs> this is an unbeliever. This is the Babylonian king. This is Nebuchadnezzar, the head of the Babylonian system in those days. The head of gold. The, you know, the controlling uh, uh, king of the whole of the universe in the days where Daniel was in Babylon. The Bible says he bows down, worships Daniel. I believe part of what the Holy Spirit is doing at this time is that he's setting the believers up to glory. He's setting the believers up to honor. He's setting the believers up, you know, to a place where even the Gentiles will begin to recognize that there is indeed a God in Israel. And I want you to see any challenge, any difficulty, any obstacle you're faced with right now as an opportunity for God to distinguish himself and for God to distinguish you and to bring you to the place of glory. Hallelujah. Remember, the instruction of Nebuchadnezzar was to kill all the magicians, to kill all the wise men. And Daniel was one of the wise men in the land. But God used the circumstance 
to elevate Daniel. And I'm saying any challenge, any obstacle, any difficulty you're faced with right now is designed for your elevation. Can you shout amen? If you believe that, say good amen. It doesn't matter how long the trouble has lasted. It's designed for your elevation. And God is going to use it to lift you up. Glory. God is going to bring you use it to bring you to a place of relevance in the land in the name of jesus christ whoa i'm telling you i'm turned on i don't know about you the bible says in verse 47 the king answered unto daniel and said of the truth it is that your god is a god of gods and a lord of kings and they reveal our secrets Seeing thou couldest reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man. Did you see that? Did you see that? The trouble was used as a platform for elevation. I don't know what you're faced with right now, but I'm saying to you by the Spirit of God that that difficulty is a platform for your elevation. It is a platform for divine promotion. It is a platform for God to distinguish you and to bring you to the place of destiny. I know some of you may be like, well, pastor, I just wish so. Now, what do you need to do? What you need to do is get in prayer. If you are faced with a difficulty, now get in prayer. Lock yourself up and call upon the Lord your God until the power of the Spirit starts falling around you. There is a God in Israel who answers prayer. The Bible says, O thou that hearest prayer, unto you shall all flesh come. Hallelujah. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they got in prayer. And I'm saying, brothers and sisters, one of the secrets to succeeding under the spirit of prosperity, and excelling in Babylon. Remember, we live in a world that has two kingdoms. One of the systems of the world's kingdom, one of the kingdoms in the world is what we call the Babylonian system, the system that is governed by Satan. The word Babylon in scripture is used to typify the kingdom of Satan. And everywhere you go, where you have unbelievers, you find that kingdom system at work in their hearts. And the secret for us to reign and, and rule in life and excel in the midst of being surrounded by people operating under the Babylonian system is knowing that there is power in the prayer of the righteous. Hallelujah. There is power in the prayer of the righteous. And I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they use the power of prayer and the Holy Spirit is saying if we can call upon him in the day of trouble, he will come through for us and he will give us the victory. I want to challenge you right now, if perhaps the enemy has paralyzed you and made you become discouraged because you've been faced with difficulties of different kinds, I want to motivate you to get up and get in prayer. Get up and dust your shoes and get in prayer. Get up and bow your knees. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man Avail it much. The Bible says Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And the scripture says he prayed earnestly that there should be no rain and the heavens did not give rain. He prayed again and the Bible says a heaven gives rain. What God did for Elijah, he can do for you today. Glory, 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 glory. Glory be to God. What God did for Elijah of old, he can do again. What God did for Daniel, he can do again. He can do again. He can do again. He can do again. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What God did for Daniel, he can do again. What God did for Daniel, he can do again. Daniel received the revelation of the secret in the heart of King Nebuchadnezzar, of the dream he had. And the Bible is telling us here that the same God that revealed that secret is still the same God that reveals secrets today. And I want you to know that all you need to do is to call upon the Lord. The Bible says, I will call upon the Lord in the day of trouble and he will answer me. And I believe that if you have to, you know, go through any difficulty, this is what you need to do. And the result of Daniel seeking the face of God in prayer and, 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 and depending upon the Lord for the victory, here the Bible tells us, was that it led to Nebuchadnezzar being converted. Think about this. Think about this. Nebuchadnezzar, the king answered Daniel said, of the truth it is that your God is a God of gods. He is recognizing God as the God of gods. A Lord of kings. He revealed our secrets. Seeing that thou couldest reveal this secret. Hallelujah. Then the king made Daniel a great, a great man. A great man. 
Leno soso dinibo kabuna siele punu soto kone. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, E mendigi kanu soso. You've come to the crossroad. You've come to where seems to be the end of the road. Bana duru o uteke pania digigono. But I say unto you, said the Spirit of the Lord, that it is the beginning of a new era. It is the beginning of a new season. It is the beginning of a new hour. In the natural men call it the end of the road, but I call it a new beginning, say the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, lift up your eyes and know that my plan and my purpose concerning your life is not over, but this is just the beginning of the days of glory. For the light shall shine, and your destiny shall blossom out, and you shall rise to the top and excel on all fronts. This is just the beginning. It seemed like it was the end of the road, but this is just the beginning. Say it, the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. Take it. Say, I take it. I take it in the name of Jesus. This is the beginning of days of consolation, days of rising into place of dominance, place of victory. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says, uh, the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts. Get ready for this. Get ready for this. Get ready for this. Get ready for this. God is going to position you supernaturally in places where the anointing of his spirit upon your life will make a difference before people and men of influence in such a way that it will cost them to favor you. It will cost them to give you great gifts. It will cost them to be used by God for your elevation in the name of Jesus Christ. He didn't bring you to stand before King Nebuchadnezzar just to be one of the number. Hallelujah. He brought you to stand before King Nebuchadnezzar so that you can rise to the top. And I prophesy to you this evening and this morning or this afternoon, wherever you joined me from, I prophesy to you, you are rising to the top in your career. You are rising to the top spiritually. You are rising to the top in every area of your life. You are breaking forth into the fullness of God's purpose for your life. You were not, you've not, you were not brought into the space where you are now so that you can just be lost in the crowd. God is separating you out right now and bringing you to the point of distinction where everyone who knows you will begin to see you right up in the skies where you belong. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that concerning your life and so shall it be whoa so shall it be i'm turned on i don't know about you so shall it be so shall it be he gave him great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of babylon did you see that and chief of the governors over all the wise men of babylon this is what we call divine promotion i prophesy divine promotion for you in the name of jesus by the manifestation of the spirit in the name of jesus the revelation that daniel got was a, rev- a manifestation of two gifts of the spirit gift a word of knowledge and gift a word of wisdom gift a word of knowledge brought the insight into the dream that Nebuchadnezzar already had. Remember, gift the word of knowledge deals with things present and past. Gift the word of wisdom brought the revelation of the meaning of the dream to, to Daniel, which he gave the interpretation to Nebuchadnezzar. So the manifestation of the spirit in word of knowledge and word of wisdom was a key to this promotion that Daniel is receiving in the land. And I'm praying for you that the manifestation of the spirit will be given to you to profit with her in different areas where you need to profit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to be given unto you in the name of Jesus that you will excel, you will rise to the top, you will prosper by the manifestation of the Spirit. It will bring divine promotion unto you. It will set you above. <laughs> above your peers. Remember, Daniel was one of the wise men. By the manifestation of the spirit that was given to Daniel, he was set above his colleague wise men. He became their governors. 
He became their governors. And remember the Bible says promotion cometh neither from the east nor does it come from the west. It comes from the Lord. And I believe the spirit of God is saying it is your set time, your set time to be promoted by the anointing. And I decree and declare that the anointing of the spirit is even now elevating you in ministry. The anointing of the spirit is elevating the house of diplomats assembly, giving us a voice globally. The anointing of the spirit is elevating us in the name of Jesus and placing us in positions of rulership on all fronts in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe, say, I take it. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm supercharged, super turned on. This is so amazing. This is so amazing. Glory, 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 glory. Daniel was made chief of the governors over all the wise men in Babylon. Verse 49, then Daniel requested of the king and he sent Shadrach, he sent Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, his prayer partners. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it is good to have people who pray. It is good to associate to people who pray. It is good to be a, comp a part of the company of praying men. I'm telling you, this is why you can always join us every day. You know, we're praying on DRM live every morning and every evening. It's good to be a part of men and women who pray. There's something about associating with praying men. The miracle that Daniel got, the manifestation of the spirit that Daniel received was not a product of his effort alone. He had people praying with him. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were all praying with him. And when the blessings fell, all those who were participating in the prayer became beneficiaries of the blessing. And that's what is happening here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were set over the affairs of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Hallelujah. God is positioning you to sit in the gate of kings. I proclaim it. I declare it. I lay claim to it. We are being positioned in the name of Jesus to sit in the gate of kings. Say, I take it in Jesus' name. Whoa. Why was this written in scripture? I've showed you in scripture there are prophetic patterns. The reason why God declares certain things is so that we can boldly lay claim to it and say, this is mine. Whoa, this is this is mine. <laughs> this is mine. I don't know about you. This is mine. This is mine. I'm supernaturally positioned by the Spirit of God to see it in the gate of kings glory 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 hallelujah all right let's read chapter three of the book of daniel now nebuchadnezzar goes ahead and decides to do something wrong in chapter three of the book of, of daniel the bible says nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the bread thereof six cubits he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to, the, to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors. You know the story. He sets up this golden statue and then commands everybody to bow and worship the statue. And he's instituting idolatry. Remember that the vision Daniel saw was that they, there was a statue and the head of that statue was made of gold. So Nebuchadnezzar, immediately Daniel tells him that, look, this head of gold is you. It's you and it's symbolic of your kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar decides to now go ahead physically and build a statue. And he built this statue and made it of gold representing his you know, his position, you know, <laughs> and the Bible says he passed the law that whenever, when, you know, verse 5, verse, uh, where we, verse 4, then, you know, and Herod cried aloud to you, you know, it is commanded, you know, O people, nations, languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbot, psaltery, dulcima, and all kinds of music, when you hear the sounds of all kinds of music, you shall fall down. You fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. You see that? He is giving this instruction now and is telling people, you worship the golden image. Once you, once you hear it and you see the sign, you, you begin to worship. And verse 6 says, Whosoever falleth not down, falleth not down and worship it, shall be 
uh, you know, the same hour cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, you know, they all rose up and worshipped. Well, you know the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, hallelujah, found themselves caught in the crossfire. It was their turn for promotion. Everybody listen to this. You must understand, in the system of Babylon, you know, there are different types of hurdles you will need to cross. Different types of obstacles you will need to cross. You know, and this is one of the first obstacles you will need to cross. I call it a test of gold. The statue of Nebuchadnezzar was made of gold. And Nebuchadnezzar passed the law and said, you know what? You must bow and worship this gold. Bowing down to worship gold is a type and shadow of, you know, being controlled by the spirit that controls the Babylonian system, which is money. God wants to prosper the righteous. God brought us, you know, out of darkness to cause us to inherit the wealth of the weed hidden, not so that we can be controlled by the gold and the prosperity in the land. And this is part of what Satan desires to do. Satan's plan, when he sees that God is elevating his children, is to make the financial systems of the world, money, and all the accompanying you know, attributes of money to become an idol in the life of believers. Now, I want you to be very careful because the Holy Spirit wants us to gain this light. And the devil is going to make it in such a way that there will be traps, temptations of different kinds to test your faith. I call it the test of fire and to test your confidence in God. Sometimes the devil could attack you financially and bring you in such a space whereby in order for you to prosper, you may need to compromise. You may need to find yourself bowing down to the systems of Babylon. And this is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found themselves in. When Nebuchadnezzar said, you know what? You must bow to the idol of gold. If you don't bow to the idol of gold, you're going to burn in the fire of poverty. You're going to burn in the fire of difficulties. You're going to burn in the fire of singleness. There are some ladies who have found themselves confronted by this devil of temptation, you know, tempting you to bow down to the idol of gold, which is the idol of money. I want to motivate you by the Spirit of God that you don't want to bow down. You don't want to compromise. You don't want to let the devil in, you know, to compromise. You don't want to compromise in any way. There are there are systems that many of you will come across, even in your office, places where you will be you'll be tempted to compromise your faith. The reason for this compromise is, you know, to bring you into subjection and bring you bound to the spirit that controls Babylon. The Babylonian spirit is controlled by the spirit of behind money. A lot of times the Bible says, so this is what, this is one of the reasons why the Bible actually says the love of money is the root of all evil and those who will prosper many times who go out of their way to prosper at all costs without allowing God to lift them up, they will end up falling into captivity and diverse temptations which sometimes can destroy their souls. Destroy their souls. The story of chapter 3 of the book of, of Daniel is a revelation to us that in the world where we're living, part of what Satan is going to use is to try to use money to control your destiny. He will try to use money to make you compromise. He will try to use money to make you lose your consecration, to make you lose your dedication to God. I want to encourage you if you have to stand go through the fire, don't be afraid to go through the fire because of the temptations of the enemy. Why? Because the devil is going to bring you to that spot where you're going to be tempted with, 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 with fiery trials, with consequences. Nebuchadnezzar passed a law and said anybody who doesn't bow to this idol of gold is going to be thrown into the fire. And the Bible tells us Let's read that scripture. If you're still there, chapter 3 of the book of Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Glory to God. Well, that's Nebuchadnezzar's book <laughs> in the Bible. All right. Daniel chapter number, Daniel chapter number 3. The Bible says in verse uh, 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, talking to the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not you serve my gods? 
Don't you want to do what we tell you to, told you to do? Don't you know if we do it, we're going to make a lot of money in this company? Don't you want to compromise? Don't you know that if you sleep with me, I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to give you so much money. I'm going to prosper you. The devil will try to use compromise and use it as a bait for prosperity. I want to say to you, God who brought you into Babylon, he knows how to increase you. God who gave you that job, he knows how to pro promote you. God who opened the door, he he knows how to increase you. You don't have to use the system of Babylon. I encourage you, don't bow. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. He is in charge of your prosperity. Don't take charge by using the methods of the people of the world. A lot of people thinking that they are smart. You know, use the methods of the people of the world, you know. And you're making a mistake if you're doing that. Because the people of the world, you know, I mean, they don't have the fear of God. You have the fear of God. You know what God wants you to do. But the devil will set you up in entrapping circumstances to make you compromise. If you compromise, you will lose your touch with God. I want to encourage you, don't compromise your faith. Don't compromise. Don't compromise your body. Don't compromise. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't compromise. You know, if you if 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 you compromise because you think you're going to save, you know, something, you, you know, you're going to lose that thing that you're compromising, you know, for at the end of the day. Nebuchadnezzar put Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to say compromise. I want you to compromise, compromise. If you don't compromise, you know, your end in Babylon comes today. And I like what Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said. The Bible says, let's read on the story. I love this. The, the Bible says in verse 15, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, now if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbus, sultry, docima, and all kinds of music, you will fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast. You shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are some of you that may be threatened that you are going to be fired. You're going to lose your job. Some of you may be threatened that, you know, I mean, your, your, the relationship is going to end if you don't sleep with that boy. Don't sleep with him. He wants to steal your destiny. He wants to steal with you. He, he wants to steal from you. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of blessing and sanctity. Glory to God. Sex before marriage, you, you know, it's an hard, I mean, a, 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 a God. God does not approve of it. So don't compromise. Don't, don't let that boy or that girl make you sleep with him before marriage, you know, because you, you know, you feel, well, you don't sleep with him or her, you're going to lose him or her. Well, if you're going to lose him or her, you will lose him or her, even if you sleep. And that's part of what the devil doesn't want you to know. The same thing it is with finances. The same thing it is in every area where the devil wants you to compromise. I encourage you, don't compromise. The spirit of prosperity requires you not to compromise. Not to compromise. If you have to stick to telling the truth, tell the truth. Even if it means you are threatening that you're going to lose your job, tell the truth truth at all costs. Don't lie because, you know, you are afraid to lose something precious. Hallelujah. It is better to tell the truth and be threatened to be cast into the fire than because you don't want to go into the fire choosing to lie. Oh, the Bible tells us that a lying lips is an abomination unto the Lord and God hates lying lips. So tell yourself, you know what? I'll never lie. I don't care what you think about me. I'll never lie. And it's important not to associate with people who are lying liars. It's important not to appreciate with anyone who lies because you see these things are contagious. You learn the ways of the person. When you are associated with somebody who's given to lying, you learn his ways. Thank God because Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they had right association. They were people of integrity. They were people who knew how to stand their grounds and who refused to compromise. Glory, glory, glory. Verse number 16 and I want you to know brothers and sisters Sometimes in order for you to rise to the top and for the spirit of prosperity to bring you to where he, it plans to take you to. Sometimes you may be the only one on a particular road. Think about this. In the whole universe or in the whole world at that time, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were the only three people that were found violating the law. Remember there were all the Jews. There were other Jews in the land. But these three among the leadership were the only three found who refused to compromise. 
Sometimes the road to success, the road to destiny, the road to the place God wants you to be, sometimes it's a lonely road. And I say to you by the Spirit of God, the fact that that road is lonely does not mean that you have missed God. You know, sometimes the devil may begin to tell you, wow, I mean, why are you being holier than thou? The devil may begin to tell you, why are you being, you know, over-righteous? Well, I'd rather be over-righteous and be termed as over-righteous than to be termed as a compromiser. Refuse to compromise. Hallelujah. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were people with zero compromise in their life. And that was a secret of their prosperity. Pastor, you mean to tell me that if I'm a man of integrity, if I'm a man that refuses to compromise, it is a secret of prosperity? Exactly. That's what I mean to tell you. That is the secret through which, with which God elevates men. Glory to God. In verse 14, the Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse number 16, sorry, of Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. I love this. Aren't you glad? They said, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. What a confidence. Every test and trial is a test and trial of your faith in God. And God wants you to have tough faith in what he can do. It is not just, you know, designed to destroy you. It is a test of your confidence in God. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said here, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you. If it is his soul that you're going to throw us in the fire, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. God wants you to know that he is able. God is able to come through for you. He is able to provide for you that thing you want. He is able to do for you. And even now in the name of Jesus, I am calling into manifestation that miracle that you need into your hands. I call it in. I call your victory in. In the name of Jesus, receive your victory experience. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory to God. At the mention of that name, every knee shall bow. In the name of Jesus, receive your victory experience. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is able, Nebuchadnezzar said. And I'm telling you what he did in the days of old, he is able to do again today. It doesn't matter how dark the night is, God is able to make a way for you where there seems to be no way. He's able to come true for you and he's even doing so for you even now. Glory to God. He says God is able to deliver us from the burning fire of finance. He will deliver us out of the hand, O King. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 18. But if not, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I love something about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I want you to learn this, brothers and sisters. I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to learn something from these three guys. These guys were saying, look, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we are not Christians because of prosperity. We are not Christians because all is going well. We are not Christians because, you know, God is blessing us. Our God is able to bless us. But even if it doesn't bless us, we have chosen to serve him anyway. Even if it doesn't come through for us, we are chosen not, not to worship any other God. Oh my, what a, what, a, what a people to emulate. What a group of men to copy. I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to learn something from these guys. There are a lot of Christians that only serve God when the going is going well. They, you know, they worship God, they pray, they serve God when God is prospering them. And when nothing is working, they backslide and they stop going to church and they go into a corner and they begin to say, well, I don't know why God doesn't want to hear me. Now listen, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they set an example example for us. They are saying, look, listen, whether God hears us or not, we will serve him. We will not be moved by the circumstance. We will not bow to Nebuchadnezzar's gods because of 
the temptation. Our, our commitment to God is not hinged on what it does for us. We belong to him, spirit, soul, and body. He is our God, whether he blesses us or not. He is our God, whether things go the way we want it or not. Oh my, I believe God is raising a new generation, a new generation of men and women who live without compromise. And I see you as one of those people in the name of Jesus who live for God. You live for God at all times. You are in church, even though, you know, I mean, even when you're going through the storms, you are in church. When you are going through fire, you are serving God. When you are going through troubles, you are serving God. You serve God at all times. You serve God at all seasons. You serve God in all circumstances. Listen to this. God never promised you that you will not go through the fire. But he promised you that if you're going through the fire, it will not burn you. He never promised you. Oh, man, I believe it's by the Spirit of God for me to read that scripture to you. I believe it's by the Spirit of God for me to read that scripture to you. Isaiah 43, go over there. Let me read it to you. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. This is God's promise for you. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Emmanuel Ogbeche. Put your name there. Put your name there. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord that created thee. Thank you, Jesus. You created me. You made me a new creation. You recreated me by your spirit. Hallelujah. O Emmanuel Ogbeche. And he that formed thee. Oh, Emmanuel Obeche, glory to God. He says to you, fear not, fear not. Isaiah 43 verse 1. He says, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Can you say that? The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Can you say that now? Say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed from trouble. I am redeemed from failure. I am redeemed from poverty. I am redeemed from sickness. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can you do that now? Can you say, I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Glory to God forevermore. Glory to God forevermore. He says fear not for I have redeemed thee. He's telling us that he has redeemed us so that we can start saying we are redeemed. I am redeemed. Glory to God. I am redeemed. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Amen and amen. Are you out there? He says, fear not, I've redeemed you. I've delivered you from the domain of darkness. I've called you into my marvelous light. He says, I have called you by thy name. Thou art mine. Can you make that declaration? Say, I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. Say, I am his property. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I've got a branding in my spirit that says, I am God's property. <laughs> Verse number two says, when thou passest through the waters... I will be with thee. Now notice he didn't say you will not pass through the waters. He's saying when you pass through the waters, he's going to be there right by your side. And he says when you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Why? Because you are on the planet. On the planet earth, there are waters that you may need to go through. There are rivers you may need to cross. And as long as you are on the planet and you belong to God, he's saying no of a shorty that my presence will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I am saying this he said so that you can boldly say at all times God is my supplier God is my source God is on my side he provides for all my needs he causes my fingers to profit and he increases me on every side hallelujah he says when you go to the rivers they shall not overflow you when thou walkest through the fire Notice that thou, thou shalt not be born. Thou shalt not be born. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. I'm telling you, this is so powerful. This is the scripture I want to believe. And the revelation that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tapped into. They understood there was something about God and his presence with them that will prevent them from being born by the flames of Nebuchadnezzar's fire. And so they said, to, to Nebuchadnezzar. If you go back there to Daniel chapter number 3, we were reading Daniel chapter number 3, we were reading from there. They said to Nebuchadnezzar, you know, verse number 18, you know, verse 17, our God is able to deliver us on the burning fiery furnace. So they had revelation. Revelation. Everybody say revelation. Everybody say revelation. It's so important. Revelation is the key to, to manifestation. It is the key to victory. You need revelation of God's covenant with you. We have a covenant with Jehovah. And by his blood covenant with us, he has redeemed us. And he has covenanted his 
his presence to be with us at all times and at all seasons. And we have this divine presence with us. And he's telling us here that if you go to the fire, it will not burn you. And we need an audacity of faith, an audacity of confidence. We need a new heart of confidence in God's presence. This is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you can be bold to declare and bold to stand on God's promises, God will be bold to come true for you. Glory to God. Amen. 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 And they said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is going to deliver us. If not, be known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his face, of his visages, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Look at these guys. They didn't change their mind. They were ready to die. Can I ask you, how far are you ready to go to stand your grounds in your faith in God? How far are you ready to go to stand your grounds in your confidence in God? How far are you ready to go to resist temptation and to refuse to compromise? Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did not just prosper, you know, like, you know, ordinary. They didn't just excel in Babylon. They were tough men. They were tough in faith. They were men who were steadfast. And I challenge you that the great of steadfastness is in you, you need to just let it out and choose to be steadfast and not fall fall apart like a two dollar watch you know in the midst of the slightest of pressure. These are not people that give up easily and I encourage you that, that, that you have the ability, it's in you, you just need to release it and don't quit easily, don't give up easily, don't throw in the towel easily. Men who throw in the towel, they always give up before they gain the victory. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Bible tells us here, you know, they allowed them to tie them up. They didn't say, hey, oh, king, hey, 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 king, sorry, oh, king, sorry. No, they didn't do that. They didn't change their mind. They saw themselves bound. They saw themselves tied. And they were like, thank you, Jesus. What a privilege it is to die for what we believe in. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is the kind of spirit we need. It's called the spirit of faith. The never quitting, never giving up, never compromising attitude, holding on tenaciously to the word of God, even if it means being killed for what you believe God is able to stand by you when you stand firm by his word and that's exactly what happened here in this scripture that's what happened here in this scripture the Bible says in verse number uh, verse number uh, uh, 21 then these men were bound in their coats their horses and their hats and and their uh, other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Did you see that? The furnace was so hot and God wanted to show that his power was at work for his covenant people. The people who threw the three men into the fire, the flames killed them. The flames killed them. But the three covenant children of God were supernaturally, the word of Isaiah for the three was supernaturally at work. The fire did not kindle upon them. Mala de ge ge ge. And God is saying that same covenant is a covenant I have with you. When you go through the fire, it will not kindle upon you. Other people may be burning by the fire, but for you, you are separated. And you shouldn't become begin to cry when you see people being kindled, you know, kind, you know, fire kindling upon people around you, you know, because you are not like them. You are different from them. Amen. I said, Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says in verse 23, Then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished. <laughs> astonished. He turned into a stone. <laughs> he was astonished. Astonished. That's an old English word for astonished, for shocked, for surprised, for flabbergasted. He was amazed. He was like, 
Oh my God, what's going on here? What's going on here? This is nothing. What is happening here? And now Nebuchadnezzar is looking into the fire and he's shocked to his bones. And the Bible says he was astonished and he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king, we put three men. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men lose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no heart. And the form of the fort is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. That's what he said in his word. He said, if you go into the fire, I will be there. Jesus of Nazareth, his word is yea and amen. I'm saying to you right now, if you're going to the fire, he's right there with you. He's called a fort man in the fire. <laughs> the man who always comes true at your time of need. He's never late. He's never early. He's always always on time. And I'm saying right now that before they got into that fire, the fourth man was right there waiting for him, waiting for them in the fire. And I believe the anointing of the Spirit of God, who is the representative of the Godhead with us today, is even right there with you. And he's even conditioning the atmosphere of flames, making them unable to burn you. What was the fourth man doing in the fire? The fourth man in the fire was changing the atmospheric condition of the flames, making the flames unable to, to kindle upon the three Hebrew children. And I'm saying that the spirit of prosperity, the spirit of the living God is even with you right now in the midst of the challenge you're going through, ensuring that the waters do not overflow you, the rivers do not overflow you, the fire has not kindle upon you and giving you victory. I love God. He loves to give you victory in the place where everyone will see the victory. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the manifestation of your victory is even now upon you in your marital life. Concerning your children, the victory manifests. It manifests openly in such a way that your testimony will affect the lives of many. I call that anointing of the spirit in the name of Jesus over your life. I see it work for Shadrach. I I said, work for Meshach and Abednego. I call that anointing to work for you now. In the name of Jesus. To give you victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. And your story will bring forth a change in, in the lives of many. We read towards the end of the story. Shadrach himself. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar himself came down and bowed himself, you know, to God. Recognizing that the Lord God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego is the God that rules over the heavens and the earth. Set forth your hands this way. Set forth your hands this way. I feel the anointing of the Spirit of God right now. Set forth your hands this way. In the name of Jesus. I direct that anointing. If you're listening on the radio, place your hand on the radio or your phone. If you're using your phone, if it's your computer, place your hand there. If it's your laptop on TV, wherever you are connected, just make a, a contact with me right now. I feel the anointing in the name of Jesus, the manifestation of the Spirit in the midst of flames. Abadi, Kukin, Abadi, Adu, Sotono. Whatever the flames of fire signifies, concerning your life, I call the Spirit of God in the manifestation. Sweet Holy Spirit, manifest right now, concerning the lives of your people, according to each one's area of need. You gave Daniel the manifestation of your presence, and it brought promotion to him. Now you gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego the manifestation of your presence, and it God brought victory unto them. I receive for everyone under the sound of my voice right now, the manifestation of the Spirit, the manifestation of the spirit. That's right. That's right. That anointing right now is going through many of you. You can feel it streaming through your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. It's like waves of glory. Waves of heaven's electricity are directed upon you. I call it into manifestation into your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Let it neutralize every flame from hell. Let it neutralize and change every counsel of the enemy. Let it rewrite every record against you. Every plot against your life. Let that anointing change it. Any area where you need victory, let the anointing give you the victory. I call it into manifestation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every mountain to melt before you. I command every obstacle to the pathway of your rising to the top to go away. I speak to that circumstance. I command it to become a platform, a platform for your promotion in the name of Jesus. I call the blessing of the Lord over your life. Victory is yours. 
I declare in the name of Jesus, victory unto you on all fronts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Whoa, hallelujah. Come on. Make a job for noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Make a job for noise unto the Lord because you're gained the victory. You already gained the victory. You already gained the victory. You already gained the victory. The victory is yours. The victory is yours. The victory is yours in that area of your life. God is able and he is even doing it for you right now. Every miracle you need comes into your hands. Every supply you need comes into your hands. I declare it into your life in the name of Jesus. I call the miracle power of God upon your children in the name of Jesus that anointing walks on your children and turns around your circumstance for your good. And the blessing of the Lord is upon your entire household this day in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe Shout aloud. Amen. We don't want to close the service without giving you the opportunity to give your heart to Jesus. If you're not yet born again and you're allowed to give your heart to Jesus, can you say these words after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for my sins. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Find a Bible-believing church. If you live in any of the cities where Diplomats Assembly is located, I invite you to come and join us right here at Diplomats Assembly and your life will never be the same again. Amen. Let's pray over our tithes and our offerings, you know, before we, we close the service this evening. If you have your tithes and your offerings, we're going to just pray over it in the name of Jesus. We pray over the tithes, we pray over the offerings. We declare that as we give, it is given unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men give to our bosom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is one of the times to give. You know, so give your offerings and let your seed be a voice going up to the realm of the spirit. You can use the banking details that are displayed on the screen, you know, to give your offerings. If you are online and you like to give, you can give your paper. You can give your paper, your tithes and your offerings. You can send your offerings to divine reps, divine reps at gmail.com. D-I-V-I-N-E-R-E-P-S. Divine reps at gmail.com. Dot com. You can give your paper your offerings in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us the victory that overcomes the world is our faith. Remember, if you've not yet downloaded a mobile app, to download a mobile app from the iStore or the Play Store, DRM Live is the name of the app. Or you could search for Pastor Emmanuel Obechi and, I mean, someone's are streaming on that app that will completely revolutionize your life. Now, Pastor Emmanuel Ogbeche here saying, I love you. It's been an amazing victory experience tonight. And I want to thank you for joining me, you know, for the service this evening. Till I come your way again, God bless you richly and bye-bye.